Hello, I'm Trey and welcome to part two of my tutorial um, doing a design from Tea Time Boo by Marty Noble. In my first part of this tutorial, I completed the teacups and the teapot. There's quite a lot involved in that, but I'm really pleased how that turned out. Now I'm going to try and do this background and I find backgrounds, well, for me, I quite often do them wrong and they they come out, they overwhelm my main design. So I'm thinking that possibly I'm being a bit too careful with them. So I'm going to go a little bit bold with this one. I'm going to use a colour. I'm going to use oranges. It will be a nice contrast for the blue. will complement uh, the reds and also the greens and will be a nice contrast for the purples. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a bold attempt, but I'm sure it'll work out. Now the these these squares here, I'm going to try and do a glowy effect. And see how, let's see how that works out. I'm going to use oranges on this part, on the back part, and um, sorry, I forgot to remind people I'm using Prismacolor pencils. So, because this card I'm using has a cream tint, I'm not going to cover all of the square squares at the back. I'm going to only do so far and leave the middle cream. See how that works. Now, I have four colours of, um, three colours of an orange colour and one of a yellow. I'm going to use my medium orange first and just go around the edges. I'm just going to go around the edges of one of these squares. I'm not going to be doing all the squares on you know, camera, I'm just going to do one or two and see how that works out. I'm going to round off those corners. And again, this is a colouring technique. I've used with Zentangle patterns. I'm going to try to change in some ways this actual shape. Now I'm going to use a, a lighter orange. It's more of a yellow really, this one, a medium yellow. I'm going to overlap the previous colour to create a gradient effect. And rounding off these edges, give it a curved appearance at the corners. Then I'm going to use a, a light yellow and overlap the medium yellow. And again, continue to curve around these corner sections. Because this card is actually cream. It's not showing up probably very well on the camera, but I'll I'll do my best. It will do eventually when I've done one, more, more than one layer, because this is a very light layer. I realised when I did the first one that I feel I needed more darker colours so I will adjust the first 
square that I attempted. Now I think this one's working better than this one, so I'm going to go over this one again and extend the darker colours. Yeah, I think that's it's going to work out quite nicely that. And what I want to do now is just for these two squares to do the the outline, you know, the frame for each one. And again, I'm just doing a couple to give an idea on how this might look. I'm going to use the me, you know, like the darkest yellow. And I'll go around the edges of the squares in the, in the darker colour. Get a medium orange. I haven't got a, a darker one to come yet. I just want to see how this works. And that's created almost like a slight glow around each square so it makes them stand out slightly more. So I'm going to overlap again the edges of the squares. Do those uh, three layers again and see how it looks. Working towards making these squares similar. Obviously, they're not going to be exactly the same, but don't need to be too fussed about that as long as they look similar. Just darkening these sections around here. Now, I'm going to use a slightly darker orange. And darkening the edges now. So around the outside of the squares, in the darker orange. And on the inside of the squares with the darker orange, just to darken in. The shading around the edges. I'm using light pressure all the time on all of these layers. I just put a few layers down for each of the colours, including the darkest um, orange I'm using. I'm going to try a light uh, blend now, just a very light pressure, just to see how these colours are going to work together. And I'm doing a light pressure because I probably need to put more layers down. I don't want to burnish this. With this card being quite textured, I'll, I know I'll need more layers. If you had a smoother paper, you probably wouldn't need much, many, much more than these. But I think I will do. You know, we're looking at this so far. I'm trying to 
blend from the darkest to the lightest. I think it's building up quite nicely this um, and I think now I'm going to put on put down one or two more layers and see how that works before I do another blend. I put down one more layer of each of those colours from the darkest to the lightest and I'm going to do one more blend. These Prismacolor are really nice so I'm hoping I don't need to do any more layering. Right, I think that's enough layers now. So that's an example of how, how I'm going to do all of these squares. And I think it's going to look quite effective. I'm really pleased with that. You get that glow effect. Uh, once I've done that, I'll come back to this. I finished the background for this project and I did a medium pressure blend for the background, used my blender pencil and I think it's worked out quite nicely. I like the effect, it's nice and warm and glowy and, and also I find it's making the teapot stand out which is nice, it's what I wanted. I didn't want the background to overwhelm. So now I'm going to just, just do the spoons at the bottom. And this will be the last part for this tutorial, I feel. Uh, I'm going to use the oranges again. I would try normally to do a metal effect, however, that would, I haven't brought greys into this uh, project, so I'm going to use the oranges again. A light layer of the lightest colour. On the top of the spoons. Uh, work each spoon out as I go. Right, so I put one light layer down of my lightest colour I use for the background, which is like a medium yellow, and then the next one is more of a medium orange. And I'm going to go inside for this one because it's got a filigree pattern. I'm going to go around the edges of that pattern to darken the inside. A little bit here, darken that edge. And then the same for the rest of the spoon. I'm going to be adding darker, this darker medium orange on the edges. Because the spoon's quite narrow, probably We'll take up most, most of that spoon. With this one, there's a an edge here, so I'm going to use my medium orange on that edge. And around the edges of the top. And the spoon. And that's the same for this spoon too. It has a an edge to it which I'll darken in. Around the edge of the top of the spoon. And when the darkest uh 
orange I'm going to go over the edges of where the medium orange was just to darken it in a little bit more I'll try and put a fine dark line along this edge a spoon and the same for the other side Darken this edge. So I'm just going over part of the medium orange for the side and just the very edges on the top. I'm going to go over again with the lightest colour for this these spoons, which is the like a medium yellow. So blending those lines a little bit. There's a part here on the top of here that I want to darken in slightly just to emphasize that shape. A little bit. Now those uh, layers I've done for the spoons I uh, will do a few more layers of the darker colours. I placed down uh, another two layers of the darkest uh, oranges I was using and also did a light blend. Uh, while I was doing this I changed my tact a little bit with the shading. I shaded the stem of the spoons darker and I darkened the edges on one side more than the other. It wasn't quite working for me really um, trying to do shading on both sides, dark shading. Sometimes things are just a little bit too thin, you know, they're small. I just felt it would work better especially for these two spoons just to do the darkest on one side. So I'm just putting another couple of darker layers down. Going around the edges again for this one. Darker. The darkest on this side. Just to see if it makes it slightly more really stick with the shading. A medium orange, just to extend that shading a bit more. Now with the medium yellow I'm not going to go over those sections again because when I blend it will push the darker colours across. I'm just going to go over lightly the top of this spoon. Just very lightly. Now I'll do another blend. Again only medium to light pressure. I'm not want to burnish it too much and I'm just going from the darkest towards the lightest uh, pushing some of that colour across right and that's the the spoons done and also that is the end of part two of, of this tutorial for the teapot and uh, teacups. So I hope you found this useful and interesting and got some tips from this and in the next part I hope to complete this tutorial. Um, there's a table here and a doily. I'm not 100% sure what to do with these corner bits so I may well make that a similar to the background. So bye for now and I'll see you next time.